It is the 8th day of April 2014. I am Charity Chikine and welcome to Ebru African News. We begin our lunchtime bulletin in Ghana. Now Ghana has stepped up its health surveillance since the Ebola outbreak that has killed at least 90 people in Guinea and Liberia. Medical charity Medicine San Frontiers has warned of an unprecedented epidemic in an impoverished region with weak health services. Ghanaians, like most West Africans, are worried about an Ebola outbreak reaching their country. Even after blood tests revealed that a 12-year-old girl who died of viral fever with bleeding did not have Ebola. <laughs> Health Minister Sherry Hani Ayiti said Ghana, which borders Togo, Burkina Faso and Ivory Coast, has stepped up its health surveillance since the Guinea outbreak. The samples of the blood you know, that they analyze you know, is negative of Ebola virus and also negative of any uh, common viral fever. And on this note, would like to allay the fears of Ghanaians, you know, that uh, the Ebola virus has actually been detected in Ghana. The girl was the first suspected case in Ghana of Ebola, which has killed more than 90 people in Guinea and Liberia. Another suspected case has been reported in Mali. The World Health Organization, however, says the epidemic doesn't yet warrant severe restriction of population movement. No restriction into coming to Ghana or Ghanaians coming, going out uh, of their country. No restrictions into trade. There is no need to get into that point. This is a recommendation from the World Health Organization. Ghana has trained port and borders workers to detect signs of the disease, set up a national committee, restocked testing equipment and established a telephone hotline, she said. Now in Rwanda, Rwandan President Paul Kagame has stalked a diplomatic row between his country and France over the genocide involvement during a ceremony to mark the 20th anniversary of the slaughter in his country. President Paul Kagame accused France of aiding the murder of 800,000 ethnic Tutsis. France has reacted with fury to the renewed accusations. <laughs> Rwandan President Paul Kagame took a thinly veiled swipe at France, saying it was impossible to change the facts about the genocide 20 years ago. We are gathered here to remember those who lost their lives in the genocide and to comfort those who survived. As we pay tribute to the victims, both the living and those who have passed, we also salute the unbreakable one experience. The anniversary was marked by reminders of festering anger with a major diplomatic row breaking out over renewed allegation of French complacency in the genocide. <laughs> Paki had cancelled a ministerial visit in response to the renewed accusations by Kagame. And on Monday, the French ambassador was in turn barred from attending commemoration ceremonies. Well, I think that the difficulty in the relationship between Rwanda and France is from the French side. Two days ago, France decided not to send its justice minister, who was expected in Kigali. France yet maintains it was in no way complicit in the genocide. In South of Africa, South African athlete Oscar Pistorius has testified for the second day at his murder trial. His first day at the South African court, he was very emotional, where he told the court that he had been left plagued by nightmares and sleeplessness after shooting his girlfriend, Riva Stinkamp, last year. Mr. Pistorius, are you on medication? His voice cracking with emotion, Oscar Pistorius took the witness stand in his own defense on Monday, saying the Valentine's Day shooting of his girlfriend last year had left him sleepless, terrified and plagued by nightmares. 
Since the shooting, 27-year-old Olympic and Paralympic star Pistorius, who faces life in prison if convicted of murder, testified he had been on antidepressants and sleeping pills because of his disturbed state of mind. Mr. Pistorius, are you on medication? Um, yes, my lady, I've been on medication since last year, um, um, about the third week of February. Um, I've changed my medication over the course of the last uh, over the course of the last 14 months Pistorius told the court of his inability to sleep properly since the shooting due to terrifying nightmares I'm scared to sleep uh, for, for, for several reasons but uh, I have I have terrible nightmares about about things that happen at night where I wake up and I smell, I can smell, um, I can smell uh, blood. And I wake up. He recounted one occasion when he woke up so scared in the middle of the night that he crawled into a cupboard before calling his sister who came around to sit with him. Um, I, I, I can't remember if it was towards the end of last year or the beginning of this year, I woke up in a, in a panic and um, I'm, I'm blessed that my sister stays on the same property as I do, so I can phone her in the middle of the night, which I often do, to come and sit by me. And, um, Earlier and during the graphic the forensic time. testimony from a defense pathologist, Pistorius sat in the dock, retching into a bucket. The distraught figure in the witness stand was a far cry from the gun-obsessed first living hot head that prosecutors sought to portray during the first 16 days of the trial. So, uh, Pistorius is also accused of firing a pistol through the sunroof of a friend's car while on a public road and discharging a handgun underneath the table of a packed Johannesburg restaurant. He has pleaded not guilty to all charges. The trial has gripped South Africa and millions of sports and athletics fans around the world who saw in Pistorius a symbol of triumph of a physical adversity. Moving to Europe now, the U.S. has voiced concern over heightened tension in eastern Ukraine after pro-Russia demonstrators seized government buildings in three cities. This happened as Ukraine launched an anti-terrorist operation in the south and eastern city of Kharkiv and arrested about 70 people from seizing the regional administration building. Pro-Russian protesters in eastern Ukraine seize arms in one city. Respublika. and declare a separatist republic in another. Kiev describes the moves as part of a Russian orchestrated plan to justify an invasion to dismember the country. Kiev says the overnight seizure of public buildings in three cities in eastern Ukraine's mainly Russian-speaking industrial heartland are a replay of events in Crimea. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry told his Russian counterpart that Washington is watching the events with great concern. In a telephone conversation, the two discussed meeting for talks. British Foreign Secretary William Hague is also issuing a warning. And anything that Russia may be doing to foment uh, unrest in eastern Ukraine is now a very, very urgent and important matter. Nightfall brings little relief to the tensions. Unlike Crimea, where ethnic Russians form a majority, most people in the east and south are ethnically Ukrainian, although they speak Russian as a first language. Eastern oligarchs who once backed President Viktor Yanukovych have thrown their weight behind the government in Kiev. And the unrest there is a test of their ability to assert control. In the East, Indians continue voting today in the world's biggest election, which is expected to sweep the Hindu nationalist opposition to power at a time of low growth, anger over corruption and warnings about religious unrest. The 814 million strong electorate is focused to inflict a punishing defeat on the Congress party. After a decade-long rule and elect the Bhartiya Jantra party, the BJP, led by conservative hardliner Narendra Modi. 
lining up to participate in the world's biggest ever election. These voters in India's northeastern state of Assam are among the first to cast their ballots, in a poll being fought nationally between the ruling Congress party and the Hindu nationalist BJP opposition. What do I want from my leader? Well, we are the poorest of the poor, and we just want discrimination against us to be reduced. More than 800 million people are registered to vote in the nine-phase ballot over five weeks. The parliamentary election is a mammoth feat of organisation, as voters travel to nearly one million polling stations. Till now, the uh, voting process is going peacefully, uh, and uh, the voters are, are cooperators, uh, and uh, from and polling is going on uh, since 7 a.m. here, and half uh, 5 p.m. will be completed. Tea growing Assam is a Congress stronghold, but some voters have been swayed by BJP leader Narendra Modi's promises of strong leadership and economic development. We need true leadership, and I'm hopeful that Modi will be able to give us that. We need change, and Modi will bring that. From Assam and nearby Tripura, the voting moves to the capital, New Delhi, and then around the rest of the country, before polls close on May the 12th, with results due four days later. In matters national resources, now there are nearly 700 hot springs across Greece, but only 100 are accessible to the public, and few of those are commercially exploited. Two and a half thousand years ago, this was the site of a famous battle, when 300 Spartans took on a huge Persian army. But the thermal springs at Thermopylae, which means hot gates, were also where the Greek divine hero Heracles would come to relax. A few people are still in the know and come here for the water's curative powers. The first one to study hot springs was Hippocrates, the father of medicine, who discovered an autonomous branch of hydrotherapeutic treatment. He himself said that good climate, good and healthy food, healthy environment and water is what gives the divine presence of health, well-being, beauty and strength. There are nearly 700 hot springs across Greece, but only about 100 are accessible to the public, and few of those are commercially exploited. The spa towns that are set up to cater to tourists have found themselves in economic hot water, with visitor numbers dwindling due to the crisis. But there are hopes that this could soon change, with an EU cross-border healthcare directive allowing patients to choose where they seek treatment, paving the way for more medical tourism. Whoever tries it feels better and lives longer, from what locals say. People who could not walk bathed inside and then could slowly walk. Here the waters fall directly from the mountain. It's pure, natural, thermal water. In Germany there are also hot springs, but they're artificial and the waters are mixed with something else. More than half of Greece's thermal springs mix with coastal waters, making it an ideal combination of thalassotherapy, or sea therapy, with thermal hydrotherapy. Believers say the waters relax the muscles, clear the lungs, strengthen the bones and even whiten the teeth. The water contains sodium, potassium, lithium, ammonium and calcium. It's good for rheumatisms, arthropathies, spondyloarthritis, post-traumatic disorders, osphialgia, ischialgia, well-being, relaxation and spa. But the industry remains largely untapped. Four hot springs, including Thermopylae, were put up for sale to private developers last year, but there were no takers. These bathers will be getting their hot water health care for free for the foreseeable future. Now, on a light note, on the International Pillow Fight Day, massive pillow fights broke out in cities around the world. This is how hundreds of pillow fighters engaged in Hong Kong's financial district. Hong Kong gets ready to take a pounding. It's one of a hundred cities around the world participating in the annual pillow fight. And organizer Tom Grundy manages to escape the gentle abuse for just a few minutes. 
in Hong Kong, it's quite a high pressure city, so it's a good chance for everyone to let off some steam! <laughs> Most participants say it's a safe and fun stress reliever. All the teenagers here will be having exams coming soon. And it's just a lot of steam. And maybe just to be a kid again. It's nice seeing people with pillows every now and again. Just gotta get out your system. And at the end of the day, all that's left to do is wait for the feathers and fluff to settle. That story wraps up the bulletin for now. I am Charity Kine. Thank you for your scintillating company and enjoy the rest of your viewing here at Ebru Africa. Newline Limited, your one-stop shop for elegant and comfortable office furniture. Newline responds to your expectations for office furniture in a modern language. We offer a five-year warranty period including unit transfers within Nairobi. For more information, visit our showroom at Chester House, Loiter Street, Nairobi. Newline Limited, your success partner. Makeup. Does your exterior complement your interior? Everyone needs a home that is inspired by nature. At Yenbo Limited, we offer durable, energy efficient, and affordable UPVC windows in attractive colors. Visit us at Wall Street Business Park of Mombasa Road. Yenbo UPVC windows. Your desire, our child. New Line Limited, we offer current, stylish, state-of-the-art kitchen and wardrobe appliances tailored to suit your preference. We offer unit transfers within Nairobi. Let your kitchen stand out today by visiting us at Chester House, Loiter Street. Your comfort and satisfaction comes first. Floma. Professional maker. invites you to their first ever exhibition from Taki at the Lyco Regency on Monday 7th to Wednesday 9th April from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Come view the best and latest collection of dresses and sweaters. Don't miss out. For more details, call 0711 428 3628.